All right, here with uh, Jeff Mayweather and Dewey Cooper. Just want to talk to you guys a few minutes. Uh, Dewey, I know you've worked a long time with Jeff, having Jeff train you. Um, well, first of all, just what was the experience like? Yeah, you still work with him, obviously, because you're not retired yourself, but what's it been like, your long-time relationship with Jeff, and what's he taught you as a fighter? It's, it's been awesome. It's been informative. Um, he, he really raised my boxing IQ tremendously. I mean, I was just a fighter trying to swing on people until Jeff, so he's helped me in leaps and bounds in all, every aspect, in every aspect of my honesty. Now you're slowly making a transition, like I said, you're not retired yourself, but you're working with quite a few uh, fighters here in the gym and, and other places. What has his influence been on you as, as you're a trainer yourself, if at all, or do you have your own different style that's completely unique? Absolutely. I tell everyone I'm the only one with the uh, the, 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 the real Mayweather seal, seal of approval. I tell all my fighters that when they watch this, they're going to laugh. One thing that I use that Jeff is that's completely stolen from Jeff. He told me a long time ago when I first started training with him, I'll never forget it. He said, do it. The strong always defeats the weak, but the smart defeats the strong. And that really, really hit me in my heart, and I've used it and felt that way ever since. I preach it, I preach it to every fighter I have, was there a boxer or MMA. I tell them that at least two, three times a week. Strong defeats the weak, but the smart defeats the strong. That was all Jeff Mayweather. And Jeff, you're, you're training alongside Dewey. You see him with his guys. Uh, do you see any of your own influence on him? And what do you think about him as a trainer? What he does? I, I, yeah, I see, I see a little bit of my influence on him. And also see that he, he does his own thing. You know, his own thing. And I think Dewey is you know, going to be a great trainer one day. I mean, it's just like he has to get the right marquee fighter to put his name out there. You know, unfortunately, I don't know, I ain't gonna talk about that yes. situation. But anyway, you know, it's uh, a heart rate went up right away. <laughs> yeah, because he should already be there. But um, no, I mean not only that, I mean one thing we can do is who's been the most loyal fighter I ever had in my life. You know, and um, and then not only that, I mean and, and we're friends. You know, he's got guy that I, that I can count on, I can call if I need or anything like that. You know I mean? We have a relationship that's, I mean, go, you know, a lot further than just boxing, you know, but um, I'm very proud of him, you know, I'm very proud of the, the trainer that he's become, and, um, you know, I kind of feel, you know, I kind of feel good when I see it, because I pat myself in the back a little bit. How, how long have you guys been working at, at that? Since 1998, baby. 1998. I thought it was 1948. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it feels that long. So is it safe to say that Dewey's probably been, uh, on the receiving end of more uh, dooms than any fighter in history? Absolutely. <laughs> you probably have, but the one thing is this. Once Dewey, you know, start getting his defense tight, he didn't well, hardly get hit that much. Well, we've seen that when he first, we've had some videos, when he first gets into camp, he kind of, no offense, I mean, of course, easy me to say I'm as bad as I am, but he kind of sucks, but we get, <laughs> we go back in a, in a, in a few weeks and he's, he's got it all tightened right. up, so. Yeah, it's mentality, I mean, you know, I just keep it neutral, and then I put it in overdrive when it's time. And, and Jeff taught me that. It's about three things. Work rate, throw a lot of damn punches, sharp footwork, and sharp defense. Everything else will come. The counter punching, everything will be there, but everything has to be sharp and, and good placement. What I like about you as opposed to a lot of fighters, you're willing to let me film you when you're not at your best, but you've always said, as long as I come back and get you when you are sharper. Yes, yes. You've done that several times. Said, well, you can get me today, but you got to come back in a week when I'm when I'm back on top of my game. So, yes. um, you know, Jeff's style will kill you. How to say no one's going to do his style. You right. throw too many punches. His hands are fast as hell. He'll smack the shit out of you all day. So it takes, <laughs> takes some time to get used to that speed, man. His well, stuff is so reflexive, it takes some time. Well, having worked with him since 1998, Jeff, was there, has he always expressed interest in being a, a trainer himself, or did you, was there some point you, you no, kind of realized that maybe he would make I, a bit. I didn't ever know if he would be a trainer. I mean, but at the same time, I mean, Dewey's been, he's still been a coach anyway. He's been a coach even while he's been, even while he's been active as a fighter. I mean, he's always been. He's, you know what I mean? Um, he trained Jessica, you know, which I trained her at one point in time, and then he trained Jessica, and he trained a very hard fighter, you know? So, I mean, he's been coaching for a long time. It's just that he's been active also. Yeah, Frank Mundo, oh, shout out. Yeah. Is there, is there, is it kind of like a, something you'd like or something you'd like to avoid? Uh, the possibility of something you guys are looking across each other in the ring with two of your guys going at it. Um, I don't like it because I believe the chain of command 
You know, Jeff Mayweather is my master trainer. He taught me. You know, I have a few people that I really hold in high regards, and Jeff is one of them. And uh, one kick Nick Blum is, is the other. So I would hate them, my guys to fight them. But if they were the to world fight, title or something, yeah, they if get... they were to fight, it would be fun. You know, the best fighter will win, and we'll right. we'll break balls about it afterwards. <laughs> well, dude, as a trainer yourself, like I said, you you you've got a lot of guys in here. It seems like you're uh, conquering the the European circuit over here, getting a lot of these guys. How much longer? I've been in Russia. Yeah. I've been over there recruiting. Yes. I know. <laughs> around the world due to my kickboxing, savvy, and my martial arts experience. And, uh, you know, people like me. I guess it's the hair or something. You better watch your Russian, Jeff. He's got, he's got eyes on your guy maybe now, Jeff. No, no. no. One thing I'm not as a scoundrel. I love Jeff. I respect Jeff. I would never try to do that. And if I have a trainer fighter that Jeff trained, I always get permission. I believe in the chain of command. I would never just try to take Jeff's fighter. Even if I could, I wouldn't do it. I would talk to Jeff about everything and make sure Jeff says, do we? Yes. Otherwise, I don't give a fuck if it's the greatest fighter in the world. I, I wouldn't do it. Because there's nothing more important than what Jeff has taught me, the respect I have for him and the love I have for him. No money, no fucking fighter could ever come between that. That's real talk. And Jeff, I haven't worked with him so long and, and, and the, the student of the game, obviously. What's it like working with a guy that's that's got such a high fight IQ? fight IQ and is a you know a trainer himself when you work with him. I mean I think that I think that um to be honest I mean, it's, it's great because I mean I don't have to work as hard. And the question that you asked earlier about me be you know having All right, I'm in yeah. one corner and he's in one corner. I mean to be honest, I've been in a situation like that once and I've been in that and, and not necessarily a person that trained me but a person that I really looked up to and that was um, Emmanuel Stewart and I had him when he had um, Vladimir yeah, against um, Bragamon you know and it was like um, I was honored to hear the things that you know um, Emmanuel had to say about me you know I mean he gave me a whole bunch of praise and you know I didn't really know how much you know, sometimes you never really know how much a person, you know, thinks of thinks of you until you're put in that position. And basically, you know, he, you know, he gave me a, uh, you know, a bunch of praise and said that, you know, that he knew that his guy was going to be in a tough, tough situation because of the fact that I was in the corner. But you know, if it was me and Louis, I mean, I'd be honest, I would be honored because that's how I was when I when I, you know, when I was in the opposite corner of. Um, um, Street, because I felt like, wait a second, I made it. I'm up, you know, I'm up here. You know, I made it. So, basically, and it's kind of like, if I see that for him, it's like, he's made it. You know, he's, he's finally where he should be. You know, and, and getting the praise that he, he deserves. Would you guys want to win maybe a little more than normal? I mean, even though it's friendly and you, you know, but you'd still probably have a little, maybe a little extra. I mean, you extra. still want your fighter to win. <laughs> but maybe a little extra, though, I'm saying, because it's just your guy across. <laughs> not, not I think me. so. Not me. No. It's no ego. Just like Jeff, we try to train our fighters to the best of their ability and prepare them for their fight endeavor. It's not really even about me, honestly, when I train people. It's about them bringing out the most in them. If they win, we win. If they lose, we lose. A lot of trainers aren't like that. You lose, you lost. But if you win, we won. So uh, I don't even think about all of that that stuff for me. It's about the moment. It's about the opportunity for the fighter. And it's about us winning as a team. And if we lose, we're going to lose as a team and drink some apple and pineapple and get over it. <laughs> all right, a couple more. A little, a little more serious note here before we go to questions. Um, I've been seeing Jeff doing a lot of kicks in these videos lately. Have you been working with him, Dewey? And what do you think of his... <laughs> his uh, <laughs> His style of kicking. <laughs> I'm the worst kick ever. I tell you. <laughs> Him and Riddick Bow in a Muay Thai fight, how's it go? Oh, uh, well, Jeff will beat him for sure. <laughs> Hands down. Um, yeah, Jeff with the kicks, I mean, he's a Mayweather. Come on. We, we, we shouldn't be kicking. We are boxing. All right, we are you, boxing. So he's 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 talking about your kicks poor, you know, badly, Jeb. Is that you taught he taught you, right? No. <laughs> or there he self taught. No, Watch my, the Chuck Norris movies or my, something. My seven year old daughter taught him the route kick. We got the video to prove it. Shaolin <laughs> Cooper uh, taught him the route kick. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, last thing. Who who has better hair between the two of you? Um hey, Since we, we, 
Jeff, Jeff is my superior. Oh. Jeff is better than me in every way. One day when he dies, then I'll, I'll take that spot. Till the end, Jeff is the master. I'm the motherfucking disciple. I'm the pupil. You gonna disagree with that, Jeff? I, I probably wouldn't. I disagree with, agree with you, chump. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you know, hey, like that. One thing, one kick, Nick. We're talking about boxing. That's why I'm not mentioning to you because you, you'll get on my ass about this interview. You've influenced me and inspired me in kickboxing, sir. We love you too. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. All right, Chuck.